Today we're talking about escaping closures in Swift. We're gonna talk about the difference between non-escaping and escaping, what that actually means, and when to use it. But first, today's video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is an in-person coding and design bootcamp that offers housing at no extra cost for full-time immersive students. Now, if you know my story, I myself am a bootcamp grad. It was part of the process to help launch my iOS developer career, which I'm going on year five now in this wonderful profession. But aside from their iOS development program, Dev Mountain also offers programs in web development, software QA, and UX design. They even have a career services team to help you with job placement, and financing options are available. And Dev Mountain loves hearing from my viewers, so if you or someone you know is ready to start this journey into iOS development, be sure to check out the link in the description. All right, back to the video. So I'm gonna use a very common circumstance on when you would use ad escaping to explain this, and that is a network call. Here you can see this function, get followers. Real quick, let me show you what's actually going on on the screen, because I like to give the context. Uh, here we are hitting the GitHub API, we're getting a list of followers, and we're showing it in this collection view. And I don't know, I always like to show that stuff because just looking at code, I like to see the context of what the code is actually doing, helps me understand what's going on. So there you go, that's what's going on. So about this escaping keyword here that you see. So as you can see, we have function get followers, we pass in a username, page, whatever, uh, but here's our closure, right? And it returns a result that has an array of followers or an error, right? This is how we populate our collection view. Well, we tag this closure at escaping. Now, why did we do that? Well, when you pass in a closure uh, as a parameter and a function, which is what we're doing, right? We have a parameter called completed, and here's our closure. It has, it can do one of two things. It can be executed like immediately within the scope of this function, which, you know, to refresh you, the scope is this curly brace down to this curly brace, which is basically everything that's happening in Git followers. So one option is to have that closure execute immediately within the scope of that function. That would be non-escaping, right? Because it doesn't have to escape. So Think about the word escape. I know I just said it five straight times. Uh, it's basically escaping the lifetime of this function. So what that means is, is this closure needs to, you often hear it called uh, use ad escaping if the closure has to outlive the life of the function. So when this function get followers gets called, all this code executes, uh, However, what this code is executing on is this is making a network call. This is why this is a common example. So when you make a network call, right, we request to the GitHub API, hey, give me the list of followers, and then we download that list, right? That takes time. If you're on good Wi-Fi, it may take half a second. If you're on bad cellular service, that could take seven seconds, right? So our closure, which is what we call to execute, you know, once we get our list back, that's how we populate our collection view, our closure needs to outlive the life of this function because it's sitting around like waiting for the network call to come back. And while it's out there waiting for the network call to, to come back, right, it's gotta live somewhere. And it, so it lives in memory. So, cause closures are a uh, reference type. So what that means is there's some automatic reference counting going on. And because it's out there living in memory, that reference count has been incremented to one. Side note, if you're not familiar with automatic reference counting, I did a video all about that. I'll put the link in the description. So if we go to where get followers here is called on the follower list VC, uh, you'll see network manager .share .get followers. Uh, you'll see we have the, we called it result. That's what our closures, you know, coming back as. Uh, and you can see we're using the weak self uh, capture list. That is to, you know, prevent some retain cycles. But back to the closure kind of living by itself in memory, right? It had outlived the life of its original function. That is why it needs to have a reference to self to do all this, you know, dismiss loading view, update UI, uh, et cetera. So, you know, it has its own reference to this view, self being this view controller, the follower list VC. So that's something you need to keep in mind and be careful of the retain cycle aspect of things uh, when using these escaping closures, because again, they're out there living in memory by themselves. So they have to have references to, you know, whatever they're using. So back to the network manager, again, the summary, when to use ad escaping is when the closure needs to outlive the life of the function that it's a part of. And like I just showed you, a super common example of that is doing networking. So hopefully this video helped clear up escaping versus non-escaping. Remember non-escaping is it'll execute like immediately within the scope. Uh, hopefully it cleared all that up. Uh, if you enjoyed my teaching style, my presentation, uh, check out the site on the screen. I started creating my own courses. We'll talk to you in the next video.